Wow, wow. what a crazy week it's been, huh? Okay, I don't know so whether we anyone. Got, we got background. Did somebody speakers. Okay. No, now it's done. No better? Okay. It's been a crazy week, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know about anybody else. I was, um, I, if you can relate to this, like a few weeks ago, I was watching a movie and I was laughing hysterically. I don't remember what the movie was, but I started laughing hysterically. And then like two minutes into the laughter, I started to cry. And then I started to laugh again because I kept thinking about how funny it must look to go from laughing to crying. So it's been a crazy week, um, a, a crazy three weeks, but I don't know, things have been getting a little bit better. And I kind of realized that the reason that things were getting better is because I don't know if it's, we're following a philosophy of being adaptable. So thought that would be a really cool subject to talk about today. And I'm super excited to be here with uh, Team JK TV. This is episode two and I'm joined by some really, really amazing people that I get to work with on a regular basis. Today we have Jason Klein and Kelly Burcham from Title Group in Wilton Manors on Wilton Drive. We also have Jonathan Keith, our great leader of Team JK. He's one of the founding members and broker associate at Compass. And we have Chris Everett and Joe Price, who are real estate advisors, also with Team JK at Compass on Las Olas. And there's me, hey. Um, I'm also a real estate advisor with Team JK at Compass on Las Olas. So today we're talking about adaptability, right? Adaptable means the ability to adjust oneself to different conditions, readily to different conditions. So thought it would be a really awesome idea if we could just kind of talk about some of the ways that we've adapted in our personal and our business lives. So I'm gonna turn the floor over to immediately to Jason. And Jason, maybe you can tell us a little bit about yourself other than the fact that you, I think, graduated from FIU, if I remember correctly. You're a Florida native. Mm -hmm. FAU? FAU, yeah. Ah, see, I messed that up. Sorry about that. A right. Florida native. Um, let's see here. I think you, I think when we talked last time, you said something about it's, uh, you've grown up here. You've been in the area for the last 34 years. So do, is that your age? I wish it was. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, go with, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. All right. All right, well, tell us a little bit about yourself, a fun fact about yourself, Jason, and then tell us how you've adapted. I guess a fun fact or an interesting fact is that I was in, uh, was a police officer for five years prior to going into business for myself. So that was definitely uh, speaking to a, uh, being adaptable. You know, that's a, you never know what you're walking into on the job in that, in that particular career field. So that, that helped, I think, develop a, adaptability in, in me and the way I think and the way I handle and problem solve. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so you said something to me when we were talking about the subject, though. You you said you used a statement that I thought was really profound. You said, um, "Don't wait around to for someone to tell you about the textbook. Write the textbook." Or can you expound on that a yeah, little? Yeah, I, I basically said you you, you know you got two two mindsets. People are going to sit and wait for the textbook to be written on something, or they're going to be a part of writing that textbook, you know, becoming the expert, creating the solutions. And that's really how we run our business. And, and, and I think our lives as well, um, Kelly and I, it's one of the reasons we have such a good partnership. Um, I think that adaptability is a necessity for survival in life. You have to be able to change direction and adapt at, at any given time. You know, we all have plans of how our day is going to go, how our weeks are, are going to go, our life, our career. But like, you know, like my father used to say, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. So I think everyone has to, to develop um, a behavior that allows you to adapt to certain things. And I think now more than ever, because right now there are no experts. This is an unprecedented thing. I say it's like 9-11, you know, the housing market crash of 2008, and a hurricane all, all wrapped into one, one big mess. And there's never been anything like this in human history that's, that's stopped everyone in their tracks from, from just basic day-to-day -day activities to, to your career, to your, to your lives in general. And it's not as if you have another life event, a life event you, you can bring in an expert. You, know, you, you have a legal issue, you bring in an attorney. And odds are he's had that, a case like that, that he can say, oh, well, this is what might happen to my client. This is how we're gonna navigate it. This is what you can expect. That's out the window. So right now is the time that you need to think outside the box and really 
come up with solutions because this reminds me on a smaller scale um, when I was in construction in, um, in 2000, mid 2000s, the, the Chinese drywall issue came up and nobody knew what to do with it. It, it hadn't happened really anywhere before. And what ended up happening is you had contractors and people that came in and educated themselves a little bit. They, they, they took, you know, they kind of took the, the bull by the horns and they jumped out front. They came up with a protocol, they applied it, they demonstrated that it works and everyone kind of, they wrote the textbook on Chinese drywall where everybody, you know, and then everybody else who jumped in at that point, it was too late, the business was theirs already. So I think in, in real estate, it's important to apply the same thing right now because there's no one that's gonna tell you, nobody knows what's gonna happen in six months, a year, two years, how this is gonna affect us long-term. So getting out there right now, I mean, doing the Zoom thing is great. I think that's staying in the forefront of this, of, of technology and how to adapt. But I also think, you know, for real estate agents, it's really important right now, start reaching out to your, your foreclosure defense attorneys, to your foreclosure attorneys that, are, that represent banks. Um, you know, getting to know them, getting to know what their process is, asset management firms, try to find contacts there. These people are going to, you know, take over, you know, large amount of product, uh, um, commercial and residential, you know, multifamily uh, facilities and homes. And then also contractors, general contractors specifically, because they may not necessarily be able to bring you in on something they're doing work on if they're doing work for the bank, but they can introduce you to the person who is their contact, who can direct you, you know, potentially with someone who will help you, you, you know, you'll allow, they will allow you to assist them to move that inventory. So again, just, you know, basically, I just feel that if you wait for that textbook, you, your business is probably not gonna survive long enough for it, for it to do you any good. Awesome, thanks for that advice, Jason. Um, I think Kelly is sitting next to you, right? Kelly Bertram, also from Title Group. You and Jason's, what's that? Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, Kelly. You and Jason started this, started Title Group in uh, 2019, right? That's correct, yeah. You're also a Florida native and your background is commercial real estate. Is this what you envision for, I mean, um, doing business in 2020? Can you? No, I don't think any of us have, you know, thought that this would ever happen in our lifetime. Um, and a little bit, speaking of textbooks, um, I mean, this is going to go down in history books. And, you know, our kids, our grandkids are going to read later in life and ask us questions about how we adapted and how we handled this in our personal lives and our business lives. And um, I think that, you know, one of the biggest things is with the quarantine and everything else is not getting discouraged and, and like, a, so to speak, Funk. I think you need to find, um, you know, you need to find the yeses. You need to find options. You know, I think when people are in this kind of um, environment where it is a huge unknown, I think the um, the major thing is is not thinking, oh, it just can't happen. We can't close this file. This real estate transaction isn't going to work. You got to find options and workarounds. You know, um, we're working, you know, doing remote online notary services, which is approved by our underwriter. Um, so we are able to sign just like this remotely without anyone going to an office or um, even sending someone to someone's house. So there are options. Um, we've also closed a couple files, which other companies weren't able um, to, do, to close them uh, because the sellers or the buyers um, were out of the country and the embassies were closed and there was, you know, right away, no, we can't do it. But there's usually always a way to make it work and make it happen. So I think in this time, um, we just need to find the yeses. We need to work together and just figure out options and ways to make it happen. Excellent. Thanks, Kelly. You heard that there. You heard it here. Title Group in Wilton Manors on Wilton Drive. What's the exact address? 20, 20, 2201 Wilton Drive, Suite 11 but we can close anywhere throughout the state and we also have a location in Orlando. Okay, we heard it. <laughs> JK, wait, 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 Are we? do we have a special appearance? We, we have a special appearance, say hi, Phoebe. Hi. Hey, hey Phoebe. What are you up to today? Phoebe. What did you do with daddy today, Phoebe? You made, you made a, you made diva tea. We actually, here's what's really cool, is that like less than probably about a half hour ago, Phoebe made her first logo 
for Phoebe's Diva T. Phoebe's Diva T, because you know, Los Solas, <laughs> I've been on, you know, working on Los Solas for like 10 years now. And there's been a T that I've made that's only my T across, you know, I think it's at least the county. It has, um, they squeeze oranges and, hang on, Peanut. They, they squeeze oranges and it's a mint. They put mint and some simple syrup and um, some lime and some lemon and, um, and a fresh brewed iced tea. And I'm telling you, it's like the best refreshment you could possibly get. And we named it the Diva Tea back in the day because like it just took forever to get it done. But now Phoebe's picked it up since I've been making tea here at the house now that I've had a little more time with her. And so she made her first batch today. Awesome. <laughs> that was my plug for her. This was like unexpected to like have her come in, you know. She's doing so wait, Phoebe, are you gonna do your own you gonna do your own show? Right there, babe. Are you gonna do your own show, Peanut? Yeah, you gotta tell them. Tell All them right. Peanut. Tell them about your logo. You just did your logo? All right, she's clamming up. Okay, <laughs> you're, you're all right. Daddy, I'm done with my homework. All right, tell them. So, all right, well, let me chime in to adaptability. All right, well, then you got to scoot over with Daddy, okay? All right. So I guess we'll have Phoebe on. She, she'll be my guest or she'll probably run out and do some homework. Um, and, and this is where we're at. I mean, having Phoebe next to me clearly defines the pandemic in itself, that she's actually home here on a Wednesday afternoon and not at school. Um, and both my wife and I are both, um, you know, homebound. So that said, adaptability, here's a perfect example of adaptability, being able to work with while having Phoebe. All right, here, either come and stay with me or not, okay? You're going to get us in trouble. <laughs> so here's some thoughts on adaptability. So what we've done with Team JK, with myself, is to refocus on back to the basics. We've got 3D, we have the virtuals. We were back to making sure that our flyers are on point. We're revisiting the whole financing game with, you know, what's going to actually be available and financing products out there um, as the banks and the financial markets end up getting, um, you know, they're, they're having a lot of constricting and restrictions. So evolving beyond that are, you know, I've mentioned this before about our business planning game for 19 coming into 2020. Well, that's out the door as well. So we've had to adapt and now we're doing weekly revisits on our plans as we're you know, continuing to get stronger as a team within the communication um, that we've got. And that's probably where Team JK is its strongest is the amount of communication and collaboration that comes together with the team. You can't... Um, you just can't compete. We are the hardest working real estate team in the Tri-County area. And um, when it comes to, I mean, we had over 250 open houses in 2019. Virtual, the virtual and, and the virtual and, and broker open game for us, we've already been doing all this for years now. So it wasn't that big of a transition incorporating 3d you know we did that a while back it was kind of glitchy but now it seems to be like the 3d regarding like the matterport so these are these are definitely things that we're we're, we're aligning with the team uh but you will see a lot of changes that will take place with the amount of unemployment that's happened so we're going to have to continue to evolve as as we see that in itself we've had 28,000 deaths here in the state of florida for a uh, supposedly through to COVID. So that's going to be an evolution itself. You know, wh where are we with, you know, defining where the properties are with, with death, where we define the properties with people and families that are not feeling like they want to be together any longer. There's going to be a lot of tumultuous change when it comes to that. And there's going to be the unemployment factor where people can't afford where they're at any longer. We're going to have to be there to evolve and adapt to help them as well. So, yeah, those are some pretty key factors there that I would want to, you know, get out there to, to show what we're and convey on how and what we are going to be up against in the future. Back to you, Derek. Thanks for sharing that, Jonathan. We weren't expecting the, uh, our special guest there, so we had to be adaptable right then and there. We, I think we did pretty good. Uh, one thing we forgot to point out, though, see, I, we didn't, everybody didn't get to see what we know you like to do so 
let me let me back up here for a second and I'm going to share something personal about myself and then we're going to go into you because it's it's kind of pertinent, right? So there's a little fun fact about me that I want everyone to know. Aside from Star Wars, I absolutely love the band Pink Floyd as my favorite all-time yeah. band of all uh, time. Uh, and my top my three song. songs, Sorrow, Keep yeah. Talking, and Wish You Were Here. But you, Jonathan. Have oh, I have it right here. Of- and this is my song. <laughs> this is my COVID song for where we're at as of today. Let me see if I've got it here. <laughs> that was yesterday from Forno. Nice. All right, so next week can we get a concert? I wonder if that actually came across pretty good, but anyhow, yeah, it was that was yesterday from Foreigner. And uh, my other song as we're coming out of um, out of Corona and, and COVID, it's gonna be um, uh, Not Enough Time by NXS. <laughs> Love that. Right. Not enough time. <laughs> All right, you and I, we're getting on Smule and we're going to have a sing-off, okay? <laughs> That'll hurt everybody. Nobody will tune in for that. I know, not not for me, at least. <laughs> All right, so Chris, I have yes. had the pleasure of working with you. You're an amazing, amazing person. If you, if, if you want to know anything about Fort Lauderdale, this is the woman to talk to. Chris knows so much about the area. She's been in real estate for a while and she may or may not be the famous tennis player. I'll let you take it away from there, Chris. Well, I did have to take a very deep breath when I married my husband, if I was going to take his last name. Oops. (laughs) But you did it. I did it. I (laughs) jumped through. I did it. Um, And we moved here in 92, right after Andrew. And I started in corporate reloads. Everyone works in real estate differently. Corporate reloads took me from Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties all over because I had to work with a client where they wanted to live, not where I happened to be standing. So here we go how I had to adapt in the last three weeks, more than once. I listed a great house in Coral Springs. Um, Another agent brought the buyer. So we had the seller who wanted to sell and the buyer who was qualified and wanted to buy. I had to adapt. But my problem was um, the uh, banks Um, for giving the loan at two days before closing, they said no to the buyer. So what did I have to do? Either remarket it, the property, go into inspections, title work, get it approved by the appraisal again, or adapt. And my adapt was seller became landlord, buyer became tenant. And during the term of the lease, the tenant is now gonna go back and get a better loan and we're gonna go to closing. So that's called a lease option. So I want to tell everyone we do adapt. We do figure out how to go and make it happen. I want to say thank you for everyone helping. It takes all of us to get us through this. And back to you, Derek. (laughs) Thanks, Chris. Okay, so I have one question for you. Okay. What you're telling me is real estate isn't necessarily like HGTV. So people don't see three houses, make a choice, and then move in. Is that what you're telling me? It might happen once in 20 <laughs> years, but no. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear you're able to um, adapt and you're still doing business. Well, it helped the seller because the seller had mortgage payments and the house was empty and it was two days before closing, it blew up. So we adapted. The buyer was so happy to move in and now he's gonna go get a better loan. That's great news. Let's see, that's what, that's what I was talking about. That keeps everybody inspired and motivated, right? Yes. yes. All right, so we wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be the team that we are without, um, sorry, without uh, sharing some real estate here. So we have a couple of properties. We thought it would be a really fun idea to um, have a little bit of a challenge between Joe and Jonathan. So Jonathan's going to talk about 1111 Southeast 9th Avenue, Joe, and he's going to talk about 360 Southeast 12th Avenue, and then Joe's going to talk about 813 Northeast 17th Terrace. But the challenge that we gave them is they have to tell us the top five things about each property, and they got, they got to tell us why these are the best properties for somebody to see. All right? So That's here so we go. Tough. Jonathan? That's tough. I'm such a chatty chat. I'm, 
such a chatty Kathy, and I'm I've been lonely because we've been <laughs> stuck here in the house, and I'm I'm just waiting to tell you all about these two beautiful waterfront listings. <laughs> okay, okay, well you get five, you get five reasons. Here we go, 1111 okay. Southeast Ninth Avenue. Here we go, 1111 Southeast Ninth Avenue and Cypress Lakes. The corridor is McNabb, west of Federal, south of Atlantic, and on the east side of Dixie. Um, just on the east side of Cypress. Cypress Lakes, this home, actually what's interesting is this home is, uh, is a friend of mine that's an asset manager for several banks over the years. So here we are again. Um, so first off, my favorite top number one factor about this house, number one is obviously it's on water, um, but the canal width of this property is extremely wide. Yeah, see how see how that widens out right there. So it's not your typical canal where they're a little they're typically tighter. So large beautiful view over this home. So from the view as we walk up into the steps, we've got the pool. Um, my next favorite factor would probably be the kitchen. The kitchen is spectacular. You'll see that's I mean that kitchen's ready to entertain. The um, going back to the backyard set up for entertainment. That's number three. Uh, the master and then the master bath. The master bath is awesome. Brand new. We've got you know a we've got a floating double vanity plus the tub plus the shower with um, all the different designer fixtures and um, and it's and it's uh, I would say it's a sizey bathroom. Um, so that would be my five scenarios: bathroom, kitchen, view. Um, the footage of the water where you've got 80 plus feet on the um, on the canal there. Okay, okay. Let's head to 360 yeah. Southeast 12th Avenue. Right off the bat, the, my favorite part I always love is water, right? Everybody comes to Fort Lauderdale, Broward County, Tri County to be water first. It's all about being on the water. And if you can score being on the water, you're living the true dream of being down here in South Florida. And here you are. This has got, if you notice, that's a 16,000 pound plus lift. That's a large boat on that lift. So as we pop into that brand new pool, believe it or not, this is my number two, that pool is new. That pool actually popped years ago. Um, it's the first time I'd ever seen the myth really come true. That pool was like two and a half feet up and they ended up cutting it out and putting a new pool in because when they did some construction, they, they forgot to put the, uh, to pull the, um, the plug on the pool and the tide rose and popped the pool. So that's a brand new pool. Um, pool has waterfall and, uh, and, and, um, and some agitators and stuff like that. So the open floor plan, the, um, and then I would say probably another key factor with 360 is the price. You're not going to touch waterfront with being able to walk out into the pool with a boat lift and a four bedroom bath count, four bedroom, three bath, count under 600,000. This is 599 and furniture is considered conveyable as well. So I don't think you can touch anything like this in the Tri-County area with ocean access like this. Okay. Right. Okay, Joe, you're up. What are the five okay. top reasons for 813 Northeast 17th Terrace in Victoria Park? Ready? Thank you. I am, thank you. And we'll get to that in just a moment. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about Victoria Park first, where this home is located. People have been coming to Victoria Park for decades to buy cool, funky, charming homes. Vicky Park, as the locals often call it, is valued for its central location close to downtown and the beach and for its great public and private schools such as top rated Virginia Shulman Young and St. Anthony's. Vicky Park, as the name implies, also has lots and lots of parks from the waterfront trails of Anbeck Park to small pedestrian parks to the massive holiday park with a host of activities, including but not limited to a new dog park, new workout equipment, a fitness trail, little league fields, it's youth football fields with their brand new prescription athletic turf, it's historic train car to War Memorial Auditorium with a vintage on-site World War II plane, not to mention the Parker Playhouse with its new $30 million renovation. And the Jimmy Everett Tennis Center, named after the father of the other Chris Everett, who used to be in order to play tennis on the clay courts of Holiday Park, which is, and Holiday Park just happens to be about three, three and a half blocks from this great Team JK listing. 
as for 813 Northeast 17th Terrace, the top five reasons to buy this home are kind of hard to condense. So I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five A, five B, five C, five D. That's and cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> I got to adapt, man. I got to compete with those great nice. presentations of yours. Nice. Uh, this home has a very interesting provenance. It was built actually on Las Olas Boulevard in the 1930s. Then a previous owner, a local politician, moved the home to its current location on a much, much quieter street. So it really doesn't get any more cool and charming than 813 Northeast 17th Terrace. From the Chicago brick pavers in the driveway that greets you when you pull up to the home, to the Dade County Pine, to the cedar cladding on the exterior, to the tongue and groove flooring made from river recovered southern heart pine wood, to the decorative limestone used in the mature landscaping, this home really is loaded with charm. Features include a bank of six French doors offering tons of natural light, vaulted ceilings, a jacuzzi style tub, Kohler fixtures, all sitting on a deep, fully fenced lot, large enough for a pool. With $75,000 in recent price reductions, you can practically buy this property land value and get the house for free. Lastly, it's vacant and easy to show while maintaining social distance. Back to you, Derek. I don't know, Joe, that you gave some really good reasons there. <laughs> I like to think. All right, well, I, I, do we have any questions from anybody? Yeah, I was panning through just saying hi to everybody on our live feed. And, you know, again, this is our second edition of uh, Team JK TV and bringing in the different skill sets of the team and collaborating like where we're at with Derek. You know, huge shout out to Derek. He's pretty much our production manager and just a, a very, a very skilled and crafted digital marketer. So when it comes to having that kind of background, Derek's had his own digital marketing company for well over 10 plus years and has the skill set to affect and make an impact on Team JK just individually outside of the other 100 plus years of experience that we've been able to infiltrate into the community to ensure that the real estate transactions get the highest of standard of expectations and requirements when it comes to service. So that's a huge factor and us being able to convey um, how important it is for you guys as the public to really look out for um, our first responders. You know, our team has personally been impacted with, with COVID-19 and we've been addressing it. And, um, and I have to tell you that um, there are a lot of people that have put their lives on the line. I know Tom Daughtery had sent out a note, Derek, about um, about the Veterans Parade over at the Publix just off of Broward, um, just um, just south. I'm sorry, just east of University. Just getting my my uh, parameters put together on on location. So at the Publix, right on Broward, before you get to University at 4:30 today, they're doing a Veterans Parade. Um, and obviously there's social distancing going on. So, you know, let's just make sure that everybody comes prepared. We'll be getting that shout out. We're showing property and we're being extremely cautious. Um, I still have some properties that can't be shown from the primary uh, because there's primary sellers there and due to either health reasons or just unique um, scenarios that just don't tie in with it being the right way to show we hold until it's the right time. So I um, just want to convey that out and, um, and, and we'll continue. We're still working through uh, Compass Cares guys to, to let you know Compass Cares has put together some monies for the United Way COVID relief, um, uh, the COVID relief team through United Way. So food for thought there. So we are making and, and doing the best we can to make an impact and such an emergency scenario such as uh, such as COVID and and hopefully we're, we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel as we as we keep rolling but it's not over yet. Thanks John. Hey, uh, um, I'm going to throw out two other things. Uh, Joe and Chris, you both have uh, some properties, some listings that are vacant, right? That people can see um, 
with the, the yes. current restrictions that we have. So there's still business to be done there too. Um, yes. Do you wanna shout, shout out the address real quick, uh, Chris and Joe? 801 Southeast 11th Court, Rio Vista for sale or rent. Okay. And Joe, um, 813, right? Is Northeast 17th Terrace, right? You're muted. Uh, Joe, you're muted. Thank you. There we go. Sorry, sorry for the delay. Yes, 813 Northeast 17th Terrace in Victoria Park is a vacant property. I'm happy to meet you there. Or if you have an agent cooperating with Team JK, we can let you go there alone. I, uh, so that can be shown vacant very easily while maintaining social distance. And then our teammate Adam and I also manage a couple apartment complexes with vacant apartments. One is at... 2700 North 2900 Northeast 17th Terrace in Pompano Beach. We have two one bedroom apartments completely renovated with a pool, nice landscaping. One can be had for 1225 a month, one is 1250 a month, and we've got a three bedroom and a two bedroom coming up in about 10 days, vacant apartment complex just off Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood coming for and those should rent for about 1200 also. Great, thank you. Great. That's fantastic. Hey, Derek, I want to mention to you, I, I couldn't help myself but plug the restaurants. There's some key restaurants that are that are close to my heart. You know, we spend a lot of time at these different local venues. We use, you know, local uh, vendors in general. Um, so I want to give a huge shout out to start off with Frank Rodriguez over at the Chimney House. If you guys, as a matter of fact, I got a text this morning from Mark Bonswell saying that they were um, going to go ahead and donate some monies to Frank so he could serve from the Chimney House out to some uh, to some first responders, which I thought was really cool. Um, another shout out to Elliot Wolf, who owns several of the different um, restaurant brands, such as Lunchroom, and specifically Lunchroom um, from the there's a North and South location, and they've made um, they have made uh, 300 meals per week uh, for both Holy Cross and Broward Health. Um, so that happens weekly. And um, if you could go to lunchroom, uh, the lunchroom website and donate because that money will go directly towards the food cost for, for making the food for the doctors and the nurses that, uh, that are working there at Holy Cross and Broward Health. Um, also, Luke Mormon over at Georgia Pig, give a, you know, that's probably the best barbecue in the county, um, mm -hmm. possibly Tri-County. Um, and you definitely want to show him some love over there. Um, the Riverside Hotel, they are open for business when it comes to uh, Wild Sea and, uh, and, uh, and, and definitely when it gets, I think it's only Wild Sea, so you want to maybe catch brunch over there. We've got to support our local businesses or it's going to be even that much more tougher for them to, to get out once, once we're able to really unleash and, and, and get back out into the open field and and enjoy each other's time. It'll be interesting to see um, how all the get togethers are gonna take place after we can you know, see the <laughs> coast is clear. I can't thank all of you enough for all of your support. Um, the team has maintained a steadfast approach in ensuring that our business, our inventory, our clients, our buyers and sellers have been taken care of. We have tenaciously went after all the deals that we've had under contract and done everything possible we could to ensure that they close. And with the amount of experience that we have on the team, there's really nothing left on the table when it comes to finalizing transactions. And that's where this team was built up on. All right, Derek. Right here. That's it, that's it for us. Um, we wanna thank everybody for joining us. Um, if you want to see this episode or any other episode of Team JK TV, you can follow us on our YouTube channel, which is, or you can see those episodes on our YouTube channel, which can be found at teamjktv.com. You can also follow us on our Facebook page, the Team JK Facebook page, which is facebook.com, Jonathan Keith, forward slash Jonathan Keith, sorry. And our Instagram is at Team JK Real Estate. You can also reach Chris um, uh, and Joe. At any point, you saw their contact information earlier. And don't forget, Kelly and Jason, thank you guys for joining us. So Thanks, much. Kelly and Jason. Thanks, guys. Chris, Thanks. Chris, Joe, seriously, love you guys. And um, signing out, the hardest working team in the Tri-County area, Team JK and Team JK TV. <laughs>
You know it. Thank you. See everybody. Bye-bye.